So, I have just reviewed a new Volkswagen Passat Estate. I think it is about time that I review its sister car, the Skoda Superb. Now, one main difference for the Superb is that it will be available in a hatchback or as an estate. Let's see what it is like and which one will be the best to go for as they are very similar. Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Cars and More. This is the number one place to be for car news and reviews. Sit back, buckle up, let's go. So, let's start with the design at the front and straight from the start you can tell that this is a premium Skoda, more so than the Passat. We get a decent sized upright grille with rounded edges and a chrome effect slats inside giving this car an expensive feel. You also get a set of slim LED matrix headlights connected to it which again look very expensive for the overall look of the car. Lower down we get a simple bumper design with one big central air vent and this is connected to some slim side vents which has chrome bits in them. To me the front design could almost be passed off as a BMW. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below and whilst you are at it don't forget to like and subscribe. Moving around to the side and we get a minimalistic design with really only two creases. This is one through the door handles and another one lower down. This does look like a typical estate car though with a sloping rear roof and it does look quite sporty. The wheel designs are also sporty but luxurious, a different perspective over the Volkswagen really. Moving around to the back and we get a different design to the Volkswagen. We get a similar design to the tail lights to the Skoda Scala and Kamiq facelift. This is where the tail lights have a unique split in them to hide the boot opening at night. They also look quite sporty too. We get the new Skoda lettering and we also get the new Superb lettering below. The bumper is also plain and minimalistic but there isn't any exhausts either. Overall though, no, whilst it is plain it does have a luxury feel to it which I do like. Let's have a look at what engine and gearbox options you can have with the new Skoda Superb. So, for the engine options it is actually quite interesting. The Volkswagen Passat only had one engine option and this was a petrol engine. The Skoda Superb on the other hand gets more than one engine option. It gets diesel engines too. Let's start with the petrol engine first though. This is the same 1.5 litre turbo unit with 148 brake horsepower. This is mated to a 7 speed DSG automatic gearbox and it can do 0 to 62 in 9.2 seconds. And of course, just like the Passat, it is front wheel drive. Miles per gallon though is quite good at 52 because it is a mild hybrid engine. For the diesel range, you can get a 2 litre turbo unit with 148 brake horsepower. This is also made to a 7 speed DSG gearbox and the 0 to 62 time is done in 9.2 seconds just like the petrol. What is different though is that this is more efficient at 55 miles to the gallon. I'm not sure it is worth the £100 extra over the price though, especially when the petrol is more efficient in CO2. The next diesel engine is also a 2 litre turbo unit but this time it has 190 brake horsepower. It also has 4 wheel drive but this does reduce the miles per gallon down to 48 but it does also reduce the 0 to 62 time down to 7.5 seconds which is quite decent for the size of car. Just like the Passat though there is two plug in hybrid options that will be coming in the future. We will have to wait and see what they are like and they should be released within the third quarter of this year. The price of the new Skoda Superb starts at £34,865 for the hatchback and £36,165 for the estate. Let's have a look at the interior. So getting inside the new Skoda Superb and you are welcomed with a fresh design that is mixed with the new Volkswagen Passat but it feels much more premium to that one. To start with we get the same seats and even the same centre console as the Passat and the lower door cards are the same but that is where the similarities end for now. 
The dashboard is a similar layout, yes, but it has more of a 3D effect to it, giving this car a much higher range feel and makes the interior of the Passat feel plain and underdeveloped. The side vents are hidden but are this fake 3D vent that stretches along the dashboard, and lower it down we get another fake air vent to hide the central vents. Below this though we have some wood trim on the Lauren and Clement model. The infotainment system is the same as the Passat but one main difference is that it doesn't hold the climate control system. Now this is where it gets interesting. The Superb has copied Jaguar and Land Rover for this part of the idea but also Volkswagen. This is because we get three dials. These house the climate control on the altitude but also your heated seats just like a Jaguar and Land Rover. The central one houses the fan speed which is no surprise but it also houses the volume knob, navigation zoom and driving modes just like the multifunctional knob in the new Tiguan. This system is very easy to use and it gives a very minimalistic interior while still being functional. The perfect system in my opinion. The instrument cluster is also easy to read and minimalistic and we also get the standard Skoda steering wheel that looks like it has three spokes but it is actually only a two spoke steering wheel which I do like and usually I am not a fan of a two spoke steering wheel. Let's have a look at the rear seats because this should be where the Skoda Superb really shines through. So getting into the back of the Superb and there is no surprise that it is the same as the Passat. The only difference is on the hatchback the headroom is not as good because of the sloping roof but on the estate it is just the same. There is more than enough legroom too. You can easily relax in the back and you also get an armrest with integrated cup holders as well as your own rear climate control system and rear USB-C ports. You can also opt for rear roller blinds as well as cushions that come out from the headrest which is a very Skoda feature. Let's have a look and see what the boot space is like. So opening the boot electronically and you are welcomed with a huge and practical 645 litres of boot space with the seats up. For the estate model it sits at 690 litres but this increases to 1920 litres with the rear seats folded. So what do I think of the new Skoda Superb then and should you go for this over the Volkswagen Passat? Well, if you are going to be doing a lot of miles, then this may be the perfect car for you over the Passat, but even over the BMW 3 Series or even the Mercedes C-Class and Audi A4 in terms of money. If you want a diesel, then this will also be the car over the Volkswagen. And if you want a classier look for a reasonable price, then again, this beats the Passat. Really, everything is going for this car over the Passat, and the only time you should perhaps consider the Passat is if you really want a Volkswagen. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.